Hallelujah. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just coming on for a while. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't wait on nobody. I just gone on here with the word. Hallelujah. I bless Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We honor the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus on today. Hallelujah. Just wanting to come on again and do a live. Hallelujah. And today we're talking about, again, we are still on intercession. I'm not going to come off of that. That's an area that I continue to teach on. That's an area that I'm going to continue to minister in, in this time, in this hour that God has us in. And um, today I'm going to be talking about, um, if you've been following some of my lives, I've been talking a lot about getting back to prayer and getting back to intercession and how God is really speaking to us about getting back into his word. And so that's a strong area that I will continue to speak on. Um, you will continue to hear some, some of the scriptures or some things that I'm going to say may sound um, like I'm repeating it. It's because that's, that's those are the things that the Lord is really pressing upon my heart to really um, speak to the body of Christ in this time and this hour. Um, and so that's why I'm going to be able, that's why I'm going to continue to go over the same thing over and over again, because there are certain things that we need to hear. There are certain things that we need to come into embracing. There are certain things and, and revelatory insight that we need to uh, begin to receive as we move on in this season is hour that we're in because this is definitely a, an hour of intercession that we cannot take our intercession lightly that we got to be we have to begin to really get into a posture of intercession but our intercession has to come from a pure place our posture has to come from a pure place and if our place is not pure and if our if our posture is not pure before the Lord then our, our intercession will be off and so that's an area of which I am I am continuing to speak on different areas of intercession and why God is have been and is moving us into um excuse me moving us into um this um this place that we're in and so I'm just going to start off I'm going to start off in prayer and I just um those that will be chiming in and those that will be chiming in afterwards I'm going to start off in prayer because I truly believe in going on ahead and getting in to the word and people are going to chime in um whenever they get the opportunity to chime in so father in the name of Jesus father we bless you we give you praise father I thank you that your word declares that it's not by might nor by power but father it is by your spirit father I thank you for your 
Holy Spirit, oh God. I thank you, Father, the name of Jesus, that you continue to reveal and, and reveal yourself to your people. Father, because you even said in your word, Lord God, you said, call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things you know of not. Father, I thank you, oh God, for showing us great and mighty things. I thank you, Lord God, for revealing your word to us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, oh God, for exposing every area of the enemy, Lord God, every plot, every plan, Lord God, every setup in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. For your word, Lord God, will fall fresh on the ears that will, that is listening and will listen after after this live, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, that Lord God, hallelujah, that the anointing uh, will destroy and break yokes in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Father, I thank you on this day, oh God. I thank you specifically, oh God, hallelujah, for this time and this season that we're in, oh God, in this hour, oh God, that you're releasing uh, strategies, Father, that you're releasing, oh God, uh, mystery. Oh God, to the church, to the body of Christ, Lord God, and those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father, I thank you, oh God, that you're raising up ones, oh God, to sound the alarm, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, oh God, that you are that you're raising up those, oh God, hallelujah, that are carrying hallelujah strategies, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I thank you that you are awakening, Father, hallelujah. Your people, oh God, uh, and not only, hallelujah, are you awakening, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, but that you're causing us to stand. Stand against the wiles of the enemy, O oh God, and not to push back, Father, in the name of Jesus. But Lord God, hallelujah, we will plow forward in the mighty name of Jesus, in your power, in your authority, in your wisdom, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, that we don't walk in fear, nor do we walk in doubt and unbelief, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, because Lord God, you said, Behold, I've given you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we walk in that authority. We walk, hallelujah, in our measure of grace. Uh, we walk, hallelujah, in the anointing uh, that you have given us, that you have sanctioned us to walk in. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, uh, hallelujah, for this time. I thank you, Father, hallelujah, for the outpouring of your spirit, oh God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, I give you praise and I give you honor. In your son Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you all for coming on. I love to pray. I am an intercessor. I love to intercede. Hallelujah. Because God is gracious. Hallelujah. He's gracious. And one thing I'm going to tell you about intercessors, you can't, you don't have to pump real intercessors up because intercessors go pray regardless. Hallelujah. So I just love the Lord on today. I thank him for what he's doing and I thank him for what he is doing in your lives as well. And so we just also, you know, just to encourage the people of God. Rise up in the grace that God has called you to walk in. Amen. 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 So I'm going to get started. We're talking about intercession. Like I said earlier, like I said before, we're, we're on the topic. I'm going to be really talking a lot about intercession, talking about the different areas of intercession, talking about, um, Areas that we may not um, have really tapped into, or came, or or should I say, came into um, in this in 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 as as far as being an intercessor, an intercessor. You can't take your intercession lightly. Intercession is extremely important. Intercession extremely powerful. Hallelujah! I've seen so many results over my years of intercession, and how God has led me through so many different um, areas of intercession, and how God really has has given me um, so much revelation about intercession. And and so now we're in that time that God is like, I need for you to pour out. And so I'm like, okay, God, I'm gonna go ahead and be obedient, you know, because I love I love the Lord, and I believe in being obedient unto the Lord, you know, and so I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and start working this and pressing this out like you want me to, because it's time, and so I'm going to go into talking about how, um, just the different areas of, again, I'm, I'm going to talk about the area of, of charismatic witchcraft and how, um, the, the difference between, cause what, what we have had over the, over the years, you know, over the years, what we've had, we, we've had where people, um, coming to have been a part of the ministry of per se, I'm just going to say, or, you know, uh, or the church per se. And, you know, we, 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 we are quick to say, you know, that, that, um, anyone can 
can can be on intercess on an intercessory team. But I'm going to talk to you about about as far as covering your area of intercession, as far as your teams. And so um, as being an intercessor, we have to understand that our, that our intercession has to be pure. And, and again, it has to come from a place where where the intercession is um, is coming from um, from from. Uh, um, Lord have mercy from, from, the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have it right in a few minutes. Let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter, hmm. Galatians, the fifth chapter, the fruit of the spirit. That's what it is. The fruit of the spirit. Let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to talk about hallelujah. What area is, is the, is our intercession is supposed to come from before I get into talking about charismatic witchcraft. Hmm. Because again, the reason why I'm going into this is because everybody should not, you know, we, we have everybody praying for us. We have everybody in the ministry praying, but just because someone named the name of Christ, we have to understand that we have to keep our areas of intercession pure, especially when it comes to, um, uh, protecting our gates. Now, last night I spoke a lot about, um, our gates paying attention and protecting our gates as intercessors and why it's so important for our, for our gates to remain pure. And what I mean by our gates, first of all, as far as the individual intercession, Hey, cuz, thank you for coming on. Um, but our, our areas talking about our areas of intercession. We have to understand that we have to remain pure as our ear gate and our eye gate because we have to begin and have that enablement to hear, to be able to hear, uh, when God assigns us or give us, um, um, different assignments and what we are to intercede about. So we have to be, be able to have an ear to hear. And we also have to have our ear gates to be purified because God will begin to reveal things to us in the spirit realm. And if our eyes is not purified, what usually happens is that we're, we're, we're seeing what's not of God or, or should I say we're, we're seeing, um, um, we're seeing images that, that, that God is not having us to see per se. And so there's a lot of deception and we begin to, to fall into the area of, of, of what I call smoke screens. And so we can't discern whether something is a smoke screen or whether it's God revealing it to us. So that's why I say we have to be, we have to remain in a place of keeping our eyes pure and we have to be careful in what we put out, what we put our eyes to. And even when it comes to our ear gate and Another area of purity that we have to begin to even pay attention to is our covenant. We cannot be in covenant with everything. And I spoke on this last night about being in covenant with everything. We have to watch what we come into covenant with. Because again, whatever we come into covenant with, that, that comes into our intercession. So we have to guard against those particular areas. And I speak expressly also on the area of, of submission. Submission as an intercessor is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Extremely important. And so, you know, we have to begin to really guard our gates and really walk into, into purity and understanding what purity really means as an intercessor. As an innocent, and you and we got we cannot have just anybody praying for us. And I'm gonna get into that that area again when it comes to a, a interceding for various ones. So let's start with Galatians the fifth chapter. And again, as an intercessor, and this is how we have to be able to be detective and be able to be um discerning as those that are interceding, because our hearts have to always be right before the Lord. Our posture always have to be right before the Lord, because I've seen over 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 a course of time where people are calling themselves intercessors, and when they begin to pray, because of their posture, they have wrong posture in their heart is not posture right before the Lord and their heart have not been have have they have not gone through a period of deliverance and so so their their prayers that's being released out is being released as witchcraft and it's not being released on as as uh, for the Lord to to at the will of the Lord but it's but it's witchcraft and they begin to pray against um against uh, begin to pray against people and begin to pray against the people of God. So that's why I always, always talk about, um, keeping our hearts right. And again, again, blessings. Thank you. Thank you apostle for coming on and all those that are coming on. Um, let's go again until Galatians, the fifth chapter. 
I'm going to get into this. <laughs> Galatians, the fifth chapter and 22nd verse is where I'm going to start at. So we always have to understand when it comes to um, come to our intercession. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. So we have to understand that the fruit of the spirit have to be an operation in an intercessor. The fruit of the spirit does 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 their, their does their their walk represent love. You know, we got to have our, our love walk, have to be in order, have to be in alignment. And the other thing we have to also understand that as intercessors, as, 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 a, as a true intercessor, let me tell you something about a true intercessor. A true intercessor can be hurt. They can get hurt by people. But guess what? A true intercessor is still going to intercede for the people that they've been hurt, for, they've been hurt by. That they've been hurt by. That, that's intercession. That's a true intercessor. A true intercessor is not going to stop praying and interceding even though they've been hurt by a people. They're still, when, when, when an intercessor has an assignment, when they have an assignment, especially when it comes to a local ministry, they're not going to stop interceding because the people in that ministry have hurt them. They're not going to stop. In fact, what God has to do because they're so, because they're so in, drenched in the love of God. What God literally has to do, God has to actually pull them out of that ministry because then they're not going to leave because the love of God is in their heart for their people, regardless of how they've been treated. God has, God has to be able to shut that door because of the intercession. Intercession is going to pray because of the love of God that's in them. And that's, that's a mark of a true intercessor. Well, anytime uh, someone said they're an intercessor and they begin to shift and their heart begin to change and they begin to, to pray totally the opposite of the love of God, then you got to check their intercessor. You got to check that intercessor because something in their, in their heart is not in line. It's not, and that's why we have a lot of charismatic witchcraft that's going on in the church because of the heart. Because of the heart. A, a true intercessor is going to walk by, they, they're going to, they're going to represent, you're going to see the fruit of the spirit. And the other area also with the, with, um, with intercessors, and this is something that we don't talk about often. We don't talk about, we don't talk about the peace, you know, that, 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 that the, the, the fruit. Of the spirit, that peace. We don't talk about that. That area of peace, again, we're talking about um, the, the fruit of an intercessor. That area of peace. One thing about an intercessor is the intercessor is going to reconcile. They have the ministry of reconciliation. That means they, they know how to go in. And, and they, they don't like to see a lot of discord. They don't like to see dishonor. They don't like to see division amongst the saints. They don't like that. So what they do, they stand as an intercessor to begin to reconcile the brothers in Christ. You know, the brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, that's why we're called peacemakers. That's why we call peacemakers. So these are different areas of talking about what, what, it, what a true intercessor really looks like when it comes to our gates and protecting our gates. Everybody is not called to intercede. Everybody is not called to the ministry of intercession. So we have to be careful when it comes to our ministries and who we allow to, to pray and who we allow to intercede. This is an area of discerning. We have to discern. The, the area of discerning of spirits is not always just talking about demons. God, God allows us to discern somebody's spirit. <laughs> you know? Where is your spirit? You know? And so let's go over to um, Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the 14th verse. The root of bitterness. Yes, apostle, we do. We, we, we need more intercessors. We need more true intercessors. And I believe God is raising up true intercessors in this hour that's going to plow forth and really be obedient. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. We're going to deal with the root of bitterness first. 
Then we're going to talk about other areas of intercession. I love intercession. <laughs> it's not an easy task, <laughs> but I love intercession. The 12th chapter, and I'm starting at the 14th verse. Follow peace with all men. We talked about peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fall from the grace from the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up tr trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or professed person as Esu, who for one morsel of me sold his birthright. But I just wanted to stop at the, the um, scripture of, um, of the 15th. Uh, verse looking diligently lest any man fall fail excuse me from the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled so when so you have to understand that when there is a root of bitterness when there's a root of bitterness in 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 an intercessor because of the inner because of an intercessor the intercessor will begin to defile others that's around them they begin to defile, especially when you're when we're talking about being in ministry. You know, once once the intercessor begin to to be defiled, they begin to 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 sow discord. That's where your your division begin to come in. At always, anytime there is anytime there's discord and division in a ministry, always pay attention to your intercessors. Go back to your intercessors. Because that's that's an area of where your defilement may come in at. Intercessors is supposed to guard the gates. Intercessors is supposed to always make sure that there is no division, that there is no discord being sown amongst in the in the body of Christ. Because you have to understand that in a ministry, every ministry, listen, every ministry has an assignment. Every ministry has an assignment, and this is something the Lord taught me years ago. And that's why we have to be careful, especially in being apostles. Listen, listen, you have a specific assignment. Your ministry don't, don't suppose it's not supposed to look like everybody else's. And this is why I teach a lot of, a lot of apostles have to understand and grasp this concept is that your ministry has a signature. Your ministry has an identity. You are identified in the heavens and you are identified in the earth realm. You have a legislative anointing or grace, should I say, or a mantle. That means that you're able to legislate. So your so your ministry is supposed your ministry is is supposed to be has a signature. Nobody can mimic your ministry. Nobody can mimic your sound. Or they become illegal. They are illegal. That's why I was saying yesterday, I was teaching on, on, um, on talking about making sure you stay in your own measure. Make sure that you stay in your own grace. Because what usually happens, and I see it a lot on social media. I see it a lot. And that's how I know when, when someone has stolen someone's post. And that's how I know when someone has stolen someone's sound. Because I learned to, to discern, you know, the grace that's upon, um, um, especially apostles. And so when someone has stolen your post, believe me, I can tell. Because <laughs> you have a distinct sound. And you are supposed to. You are supposed, you're supposed to walk in your own, your own authentic grace. And it's very, it's very key in this hour and very important. That you walk in your in your grace in this hour, extremely important, because when God began to collaborate, understand this, and this is something that I even taught years ago. That's that's why you know that's why I, I have to um I have to get into this area of of why we have been so separated over the years when it comes to race and our and, and color. That's not of God. God is not going to have us in a black church over here and have us over there in a Caucasian church over there and have somebody else over in the Latin. That's not of God. Because our grace, the grace that's upon all of our lives, especially as, as leaders, especially in being apostolic, when God begins to collaborate us together, come on, 
We need one another grace. There's something that you're carrying that I need. There's something that, that I'm carrying that you need. We need one another. So we have to come into this whole mindset. We got we to gotta come out of the mindset and saying that, that, that I, I'm over here and this one is over there. That's the trick of the enemy. That's a trick of the enemy. We're not to be divided. A divided house cannot stand. And the body of Christ is called to be one. We're not to be divided as the people of God. We all are carrying a measure of grace. And that's what we need in this hour. We need to walk in our own measure. And making sure that we're not trying to, to, to mimic someone else. And the Lord even spoke this to me over almost maybe 20 years ago. I remember when I first started in ministry. And I was ministering. And, and I remember the Lord gave me this word. He gave me a word through, a, through another prophet. And the word was, I would never, one thing the Lord said, I would never allow you to teach something that you never walked out. Another thing the Lord told me, he said, I would never allow you to mimic someone else. I don't make, I don't make carbon copies. And ever since then, you know, God began to, God gave me my own identity. I'm not supposed to sound like nobody else. You know? And so that, that's how we have to understand and walking in our own grace. And the other reason why we have to walk in our own grace as well is because there are demons that's attached to certain mantles. And so when we begin to walk in something that we're not authorized to walk in, then we attract demons that we're not ready for. And we attract principalities that we're not ready for. That's why it's very important that we understand our own measure of grace. I know I'm still talking about intercession, but I'm talking about this too because it's necessary. We have to understand that. And that's something that we, that we have not begun to grasp as the people of God. Blessings to all of you coming on. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate you all. That's something that we have not grasped. Just because somebody else walk in something that, that may look good to us, that does not mean that it's good for us. It doesn't mean that, we're, that it's good for us. So we have to be careful. There's nothing wrong as leaders. Listen. There's nothing wrong as leaders to be able to, to be able to sit and learn from someone else, from another leader. There is nothing, it's nothing wrong with that. Because we are called to submit one to another. So there's nothing wrong with listening to one another as leaders. We are supposed to learn from one another. And I, I and really, you know, I've really grace been grace over the years because even um, there were times when other people would tell, would tell me, well, you know, you know a whole lot, you know, you know a whole lot. Why are you still going? Why are you still going over to Bible study? But understand that was my mentor. And I, and I had to sit on him as long as I was a part of that ministry. Listen, no matter how, how graced I was, no matter how much revelation God gave me, no matter how many years I had been in ministry, because that was my mentor, I knew how to submit. Along with the other, the other ones that was a part of that ministry. I knew how to submit. I knew the understanding of submission. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to, you know, outgrow or out or whatever you want to call it. Anybody. Because there was things that I still needed to learn. There was still things I, I needed to embrace. This is something we have to begin to understand that none of us have arrived. I don't care how long you've been in ministry. I don't care how many, how many places you've gone to minister. None of us have arrived. There are times in our, in our seasons where even as teachers, where we have to begin to sit under someone and we have to begin to embrace the revelation that God has us to, to walk in during that period of time. And then, then God will begin to um to, to shift us in another season where we begin to teach again come on there's something that we got to understand there's there's seasons that we have to sit there's seasons that we that we have to learn there's seasons then that we that that God begin to have us to pour out 
in, our, in, the, in the season that we spent quiet, in the seasons that we spent in being taught, the Holy Spirit is always training us. He trains us. He takes us on different, even on different journeys. And that's your season where you're quiet. That's a season where you're hid. That's a season where you don't pour out what God is revealing to you at that time. But that's where you have to use wisdom. And that's when you have to use clarification. Because God is not going to allow you to pour out until you are released and until he has finished the training process in you. And then that's when he'll release you and say, now it's time for you to pour out because it's time for it to be released to the body of Christ. There's some we have we got we have to get this understanding. That's why we have so many times where where leaders are continuing to go, 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 but they never sit down nowhere. They never take time to sit. We always go, we always going through training. The Holy Spirit is always training us. He's always, he's always revealing to us. He's always showing us new things. And especially, um, you, you can have, you can have one, one, one assignment, one message. And, and I go back again as, as far as teaching on, on, as far as teaching on as an intercessor. I've been walking in intercession for, for years, but over my course of years, there are times where God would allow me to pour out. And then at times where the Lord would send me on different training, on different journeys. And in that journey, I'm pioneering. And then God said, now I want you to pour that out. Because it's time for that to be poured out. So there are times, even don't, don't, don't change your message. If God gives you a message, listen. Because there's a lot of times what I've heard, even in, in the body of Christ, where people would say, well, why do they keep teaching on the same thing? You know, my, my Bible mentor taught on the same thing for years. And you know why he taught on the same thing? Because everybody wasn't getting it. <laughs> everybody wasn't getting it. And that was his assignment. That was his assignment. So we, so we have to begin to understand to stay in your place of grace. Don't let anybody talk you out of walking in, in, the, in your grace. Because within your grace is protection. Within your grace is safety. Within your grace is provision. So don't, don't allow anybody to talk you out of walking in the, in that measure of grace that you're walking in. If God gives you one word, if God gives you one message, stay with that message. Cause what God also do, God gives you line upon line and precept upon precept. He'll cause you to build on that, on that message. And over the years, you know, you, you've been a built up in different areas. I didn't start where I am now overnight. God took me step by step as an intercessor. He took me step by step. He began to show me how to pray. First, it began with myself, how to pray for myself. And then after God, you know, and the other thing about praying for yourself, listen. And I'm going to talk about in the area of, of being, of, of being um, the intercessor that, that knows how to hold water. If you if you're quick to to tell your own business, then God is not going to reveal to you the secrets of others. You have to know how to hold water in your own life. You have to know how to keep things hid, things that God revealed to you about you. And what I mean by you, I'm not talking about um, I'm not talking about certain things that 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 you may have per se. I'm just using this as an example. Some that you may have gotten yourself entangled into. I'm not talking about that. But there are certain secrets. There are certain things that God would give specifically to you, even, even as, as mysteries. Okay? So first, God would deal with you first in your individuality. And that's why that's a, that's another reason why when people first start out, when they first come into the kingdom, the first area I start them out with is, is, is their identity. Who are you in Christ? Because who you are in Christ gives you the authority. If you don't know who you are in Christ and you're unable to walk in your authority. That's how you understand your, your, your authority as, as a believer. Starting, starting those scriptures that, that's, that's in the, in the New Testament where, where Paul talks about in Christ, in Christ, through Christ. Because that's, that's letting you know your covenant of what you have in Christ and your authority in Christ. So that's the first area, especially in being an intercessor. And then once God can entrust you with those areas, then God will begin. God will begin to, um, he'll, he'll begin to, um, entrust you with other people. 
And sometimes those people can be ones in your family. And then he'll, then he'll start to entrust you with others on the outside of, of, of maybe your family or your circle. You know, and then after he entrusts you with those, see, there's an area of trust. There's a, there's an area of, of faithfulness of how to be faithful. I'm talking to, I'm talking about intercessors. So God, so God has to find you. You have to be found faithful as an intercessor and being able to, to hold secrets because there's a depth of intercession that God will begin, especially if you're operating in the area of deliverance. God begin to show you things about people. And those areas have to remain hid because God, God is not in, in the, God does not, um, just expose people and throw people out, out in the wolves. You got to understand that. So we have to understand that there within being, being in the fruit of the spirit. And that's why love, you know, we able to cover one another. Love covers one another. We, we we're, we're not sitting around gossiping. And telling everybody what the Lord revealed to me about so and so. So that so that's another area that we have to begin to 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 you know we have to begin to renounce. We got to ask God to uh, about forgiveness in that particular area because we are we are to hold those areas dear. And when we're interceding for someone, you know we have to begin to Hallelujah. We have to begin to ask the Holy Spirit. How, how to intercede for a person so they can come to the place of deliverance. That's why a lot of people understand. Listen, that's why a lot of people in the, in the, in the, in the body of Christ are not being delivered. Thank you all for coming on. Bless you. That's why many of us are not, not receiving deliverance because we, we run around, we talk too much, we share too much. So we, so that's another area of, of being an intercessor that God entrusts us with the secrets. With the heart of people. And then, I, then after, after the Lord began to reveal um, those particular areas. And we are trusting in that area. Then God will move us on. He'll move us on to praying for a congregation. When we are part of a local ministry. That's why I talked about before on one of my other lives. Of how it's so important for us to be a part of a local ministry. A local ministry is extremely important. We have too many people running around. <laughs> hopping from church to church. You know, and so we have to be careful in these areas as being intercessors. God will entrust you with a house and you'll begin to intercede for that house. But then I'm, then I'm going to give you a, another, another, um, another area of wisdom here, because even when it comes to leaders, there's a certain area that God would allow you to intercede for leaders. But then, but then you cannot go beyond your jurisdiction. When it comes to, when it comes to leaders, because you have to understand again, the area of trust and God is not going to reveal certain areas of leadership to you. If you cannot be trustworthy. So God will assign Pacific intercessors for leaders. I'm going to get into talking about that. That's something that a lot of people don't know. We have to be careful. Because, because of the, because of, of the mantle that leaders carry. Leaders carry. So God really holds intercessors extremely, extremely accountable when it comes to leaders. When it comes to leaders. Many, many have moved beyond their jurisdiction as an intercessor. And when you begin to move beyond your jurisdiction of what God has assigned it, assigned you to, there's too many that's operating in a place of, of divination, divination. And the reason why I say that is because again, I'm going to go into talking about interceding for leaders and some, some are interceding from a place of being of, of again, being of divination and, and, and looking for information. One, one thing about God is this. God doesn't raise up busybodies. He doesn't call us to be nosy. You know, and some of us are nosy in the spirit. So what God has to do, he has to shut your ears. Come on. And he has to shut your eyes because there are things that you are not supposed to know. You move beyond your jurisdiction. You move beyond your area of, of, of what it really means to be an intercessor. That's why it's important that we walk in, in our grace as intercessors and allow God to raise us up in the area of intercession. And God takes us, 
God takes us through training areas. And what I mean by that is that God will put you in a situation that would that, that would cause you how 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 is your when it comes to you being trustworthy? You know what what it calls you to be trustworthy. And and it'll be it'll be different different scenarios he begin to put you in when it comes to people. So so we have so that's an area that we have to begin to understand as as being what it truly means to be an intercessor. So then after God has entrusted you over a house of interceding, then God will begin to give you to entrust you with 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 as far as with communities and God begin to trust you beyond that. He'll begin to expand your territory, enlarge your territory when it comes to intercession. And so he'll move you into a place of uh, from from praying for praying for a local body that then you begin to maybe praying for your region. And after you, after you, after God has entrusted you with a region, then he'll begin to have you to, to pray, um, um, for the nation. And then he'll begin to have you pray internationally. And then he'll have you to begin to pray globally. See, this is where we have to understand that God has to streamline some of us so we can come to an understanding so we can, so we can be able to operate in the areas that God has called us to operate in. And I'm going to get back on talking about leaders in a few minutes. Interceding for leaders. Because again, God does not raise up busy bodies. So we are, we're called to be trustworthy. And we're called to hold water. So people can be delivered. They can, they can truly be healed. They can truly be healed. Thank you all for coming on. God wants to heal. God wants to heal. God wants to bring deliverance. God wants to bring deliverance. And that's why over the years, I remember some years ago, I was seeing, I was seeing, a, it, it, it was about maybe, I want to say about 2011, I want to say. And at that time, we were seeing a whole lot of leaders, mainly, mainly pastors, um, commit suicide. And my question was always, God, where's the intercessors? Where are those that's supposed to be interceding? You know, guarding the gates, guarding leaders. God raised up intercessors to guard leaders. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going into this because God really want to speak to us about how to guard our leaders, how to, how to guard those that God um, has assigned us to. So they, so they, so they can receive deliverance and they can receive healing. There's a lot of leaders that are hurting. A lot of leaders that are hurting. So we have to be careful when God revealed things to us pertaining to leaders. Have to be careful. God is not, God is not into throwing anybody under the bus. <laughs> Say that now. So we have to continue to guard those that God gives us to guard. Uh, let's go to... One of my other favorite scriptures, I always go back to this. Let's go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. If you follow in any of my lives, you're going to see that I've been in this scripture a lot. The Lord has me going into, um, into this, this scripture a lot because we have to understand as intercessors that we are, we are to also um, have on our whole armor. Have on our whole armor as intercessors. You cannot fight alone. You cannot, we cannot fight alone. And this is something that a lot of intercessors have done over, over the years. That's why we have a lot of intercessors that's tired and drained, tired and drained. And God wants us to, to, to begin to walk in his power, not in our own power. And this is how, this is how we stay in, in our, in our grace. When we're walking in him, when we're walking in him and when we allow him, to, to, to lead and to be the leader, to be, to guide us in the area of intercess the intercessors. We also have to, have to really, um, blessings. Thank you all for coming on. Uh, we have to really, um, allow the Holy spirit to, to be, to be our, um, what's the word I want to use to, to be our leader as intercessors. We have to submit to him. 
Submit, yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to be the one that's praying through us. And now we ourselves, this is another area of how charismatic witchcraft has come into the, into the body of Christ. Because everybody want to pray their own will. But they don't want to, they don't want to pray the will and purposes and plans of God. Intercessors pray the will and plans of God. And since I'm there, let's go to Romans, the eighth chapter. This is another scripture I always go in. We're going to come back to Ephesians. Again, I'm going to say this again. As I continue with these, these lives, you're going to hear some scriptures that I'm going to repeat. And it's because it's necessary. It's necessary. Amen. So that's the uh, Romans save chapter. And I'm going to start again at the 26th verse. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that which cannot be uttered. It is the Holy spirit that maketh intercession. And he, and he searcheth the hearts knoweth, excuse me. He that searcheth the hearts know, knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to the will of God. According to the purposes and the plans of God. This is, a, this is another mark of a true intercessor. Is that they're not praying their own will. But they're praying the will of God. They're praying the will of God for, for God's people. Amen. They're praying the will of God. And this, this is what guards us against the spirit of witchcraft. And guards us against charismatic witchcraft in the church. Because again, there's too many that are praying their own will. When they when they, and that's why, you know, you get a you get someone that's offended. Because they because they they can't have their way, so to speak. I'm just using this as, as an example. And then they go off. They mad. They mad at leadership. Because they because they didn't get the opportunity to preach. Then they somewhere praying. And then, and then not only are they praying, but they get somebody else on their side that, that has, that dealing with the same thing. And then you, then they come into alliance. Come on. And then they created a, 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 a network on, on the root of bitterness. Then, then, then you, then you have a whole lot of witchcraft <laughs> that's being prayed because people, because somebody has gotten, because one person, listen, one person is somewhere had gotten offended <laughs> and because they offended now they got somebody they got the, a whole team of intercessors that's offended that's carrying the spirit of offense and all of them are bitter and so now you have all now 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 they have they stepped over into charismatic witchcraft <laughs> and i've seen it i've seen it so many times so many times but God is, but God has true intercessors that really understand and really know that, that when offense do come in our heart, because offense going to come, that's the word, the offense will come. But the thing about offense is what you're going to do when it do come. What are you going to do with it? That's right. God, God has not, you know, God is not, God is not the author of confusion. Amen. So we have to begin to understand, we have to begin to understand that when certain things come, you know, when we, when as intercessors, when we're dealing with the area of hurt, listen, if you, if you've been hurt in, in any area or you're dealing with the area of offense, you know, allow God to deal with that area in your heart. Allow him to deal with that area. That's, that's not the time for you to get on the phone and get to talking, talking to everybody about what, what just happened to you. That's, that's the mistake that we all have made. We all listen. I don't, I don't care how long you've been in this thing. We've been in, we, we have communicated our, our, how we have felt to other people. But as intercessors, we have to understand that we have to begin to lay these things at the Lord's feet, and allow him to deal with those areas so that our hearts can always be pure. Our hearts would always be Right before the Lord. Always. Always. That's another area for intercessors. Always keep your heart right. Keep your posture right before the Lord at all times. 
If if your if your heart is always right, God is gonna always make sure. You know, He gonna make sure He deals with those those areas. Yes, I, and I actually I spoke on I spoke on that area of submission a couple of um a couple of days ago. The area of submission. If that's a, that, and I I'm tell you again, that's extreme. That's a powerful area. Being able to understand how to submit. But if you don't submit to the Holy Spirit first, you're going to have a hard time in submitting, especially when it comes to submitting under leadership. So we, have, we want to, and that's, a, that's an area of guarding your gates, being able to guard our gates as intercessors. But God is raising, again, he's raising up intercessors in this hour. Let's go back to Ephesians, the, the sixth chapter. And this is how we're able to discern the tactics of the enemy. Nothing is supposed to come on um, intercessors unaware. Nothing is supposed to come upon intercessors unaware. We ought to always be alert. We ought to always know what's going on in the spirit. Always know. And making sure that we don't have cloudy vision. So that we'll be able to see and discern. Because intercessors just don't, we just don't pray. But we also sound the alarm. As intercessors, we have to begin to sound the alarm and send off warnings to be able to warn the body of Christ. To warn other intercessors. And I'm going to talk about the other, the, the other areas of intercession. Because I talked on this again last night. Going to back again to Ephesians the sixth chapter and ten verse. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. There go that word peace again. Remember. Intercessors are also, also ones that know how to reconcile. And I'm going to say that again. Intercessors also have and understand the ministry of reconciliation as well. Because intercessors do not like division. We don't like division. We don't, we don't go around sowing discord. <clears throat> Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. Last night I was talking about uh, talking about um, the helmet of salvation being able to guard our mind. Some of our minds are scattered, and we cannot have a double. We cannot be double-minded as intercessors. And take on and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's why it's also important as intercessors to stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay rooted and grounded in the word. Study the word. You need intercessors need the word of God. We need the word of God. So, so when we are praying, when we're interceding, we're praying the word of God. We're giving voice to the word. So we have to we have to stay in the word. And this, and this is what, what keeps intercessors from being deceived. There's many intercessors that fall into deception because of the lack of the word. And not only, not only having the word in us as intercessors, but also, also obeying the word. The word even talks about us not being just hearers only, but being doers of the word. So we have to, be, we have to make sure that we're following the instructions and being obedient um, by the Holy Spirit. So when God gives us instructions, it is very key. It's very key for intercessors to be to be obedient to the word of the Lord and be obedient to his instructions and his leading. You, let me finish reading this first. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance. 
and supplication for all all saints. We ought to we ought to be watchful for one another. We ought to pray as well as watch. Watch as well as pray. <laughs> Either way, you know, that's what we are we are to do. We are supposed we are supposed to have each other back. We ought to have each other back because guess what? All of us don't see, we don't see everything. We don't see everything. But when we have other intercessors around us, you know, we have other intercessors around us, you know, then we're, then we're able to discern. We're able to, to see because, because get this, all intercessors do not operate in the same, in the same vein. And this is another area that I was talk, just talking about in knowing your grace, knowing your grace as intercessors. You may, you may not be a, you may not be an intercessor. And I, and I was talking about this again last night. You may not be an intercessor. And I'm using this for example, for businesses, but you, but you may be an intercessor for, for, um, um, interceding on, on an area of government. So you, so you have to understand what, what your measure is and where God has you. So then God will begin to, to collaborate you with other intercessors that also function in that, in that area. Intercession is powerful. There's a lot of keys to intercession. A lot of keys. And we have to begin to receive that revelation. And begin to unlock those, those, those mysteries as intercessors. So we can walk in, in the totality of what God is calling us to walk in. And, and things have to also be uprooted. So if, so if, you, if there's any areas in, in your own life, you know, allow God to purify those areas. Allow him to bring forth healing in those areas and deliverance. Intercessors are always supposed to go through times of deliverance. Why? Because we endure so much. We endure so much. We are targeted a lot. Intercessors are very much targeted. Because the one thing the enemy don't want, he don't want you knowing his plans. He don't want you, want you stopping his tactics and his plans. Intercessors, you know, we, we stop the tactics and the plans of the enemy when we have on the whole, when we have on the, the whole armor. Through him, through, through Christ. You know, we're able to stop the plans and, and the, the plots of the enemy and the setups and the traps. God will begin to reveal to you the traps and the setups of the enemy. Even when it comes to other people's lives, you will begin to see um, traps being set up for that person long before they even get down the road. You'll be able to see it and you'll be able to discern it. And you'll be able to give them warning. Because your intercession is 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 on point, so to speak. You, you're in the right posture. So God will begin to reveal those things to you. So, so these are areas of wisdom. These are wisdom keys and things that God allows intercessors to, to walk in. So again, we're just not interceding, but we also, we also given warning, and especially, especially if you walk in the area of, 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 um, of, of the prophetic. And I talk, and I'm gonna talk on that again. I'm gonna talk on that at another time, talking about um, um, a prophetic intercessor. And then you also have the area of of um, apostolic intercessor. That's when God gives you. That's when God gives you territories. That means you being able to govern as an intercessor over regions. So God just don't send you into a place as an intercessor, but He calls you to govern. That's a, that's a, that's a totally different mantle as an apostolic intercessor, as an apostolic intercessor. Not many talk about that, but I'm going to get on talking about that on another time. But God is really, really having, um, really having us to, to, to step over into those, those areas of truly what it means to be an, an intercessor. So just coming on, sharing with you all on tonight. I believe, I believe that the Lord is doing a great and mighty work in intercessors in this time. And again, we're talking about those areas of as an intercessor and, and, and paying attention to, um, those areas of, of charismatic witchcraft that has come into the church. And, um, I, I remember years ago was long. It was <laughs> some years ago 
And it, again, this was at the beginning of, of the Lord really showing me and teaching me about the area of intercession. And the Lord began to show me. He took me up. It was a vision I had. And he took me over, over this church. And I remember seeing these people walking up, walking up to the, uh, walking into the church. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, they're going to look like you and they're going to sound like you, but they're not going to be of you. There are times I've been in, been in places of observing, observing in different places. And I remember, um, this during the times where the Lord would take me into different areas of, of just to have me to observe. You know, he wouldn't have me to minister or anything. He'll just send me, he'll just tell me, I want you to go over there. And I just want you to go over there and sit. There are times as intercessors, God will begin to send you into places just to go sit. You know, you're not, you're not to go in there and tell them who you are. You just go there and, and you know, like going into just to um, enjoy the service, so to speak. But God would allow you to go in to observe, observe. And I remember, um, going to this one place one time and I was sitting, um, um, it was during a, a time of prayer. And I remember a young lady that was sitting behind me and she began to, she was praying in tongue, in a tongue, but it was not the Holy Spirit. And I remember the Holy Spirit telling me that it's the spirit of witchcraft. And so we have to be able to even discern the tongues, discern the tongues. So someone was actually sitting there, they were praying, but they were praying, but, but it was, but it wasn't, it wasn't the, um, the Holy Spirit. It was, I, I immediately picked up witchcraft. So we, so also with, with, um, with intercessors, we also have to be discerning because just because somebody is praying in, in tongue, that doesn't mean that it is the Holy Spirit. So we have to begin to discern that, that area as well. So that there's other areas, you know, the Lord, like us again, God will begin to send you in certain areas just so you can discern, so you can know, you know, there's two ways of being taught. There's the right way and there's the, there's the, the wrong way, but God will begin to, there God will begin to teach you how to go into the right way and what, and what to discern what is wrong, the wrong things, you know, so, so that you would not enter into those particular areas, but you're able to discern it. And actually go in to be able to shut it down. There are times when God will allow you to shut things down. And sometimes shutting things down does not mean for you to be out in the open shutting it down. Sometimes as an intercessor, God will, God will grace you so much. Listen, as intercessors, God will grace you so much that you don't even have to say a word. It's just the, the, the mantle that's on your life. On your intercession can be so strong that even you being in, in a place, it can shift an atmosphere just by your presence. So there are times when God will send you into certain places. You don't have to tell anybody who you are. So that's an area of, to be able to understand because a lot of times we, we think we have to always when we go into places, we always have to feel like we need to be seen. You, you don't have to listen. When you when you're carrying the true, when you're carrying a true grace, you don't always have to be seen. Trust me, demons know that you're there. <laughs> Even if nobody else noticed that you're there, demons know you're there, and demons will manifest. <laughs> so always understand that as intercessors. You carry a, a, a great grace, a great gift. Don't be afraid to walk in those areas of intercession. I tell intercessors a lot. There's areas that you, things you're going to see as intercessors. There are things you're going to see in the spirit realm. And there are things that the enemy will send to try to bring fear. But God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. And when we're truly walking again, we talk about the love of God. We talked about the love of God earlier, about the fruit of the spirit. And one of the fruit is love. And when we walk in perfect love, perfect love casts out all fear. So we have to walk in, in perfect love. We have to be mature. Walking in the maturity of God's love. Bless you. Thank you for coming on. Hey, sissy. You know, walking, walking in, 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 in the true and what it truly means to walk in his love. In the depths of, of God's love. While I'm talking about his love. Let's go to Ephesians the third chapter real quick. 
This is a scripture I always I've read all the time. Um, Ephesians the third chapter, the 15th verse, and I'm gonna go down to the 21st verse. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the, in the inner man. The Holy Spirit wants to strengthen you with might in your spirit. And how does he strengthen you with might? The key I always tell people all the time, pray in the spirit as much as possible. Don't go a day without praying in the spirit. Don't go a day. As, in, as an intercessor, if you have if you have a prayer language, pray in your prayer language every day. And sometimes, and when you're beginning, you know, to pray in your prayer language, you may only pray in your prayer language only for only for three minutes, five minutes. But allow God to 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 expand that area, and then you'll get to the point where you're praying in the spirit. You you'll go to the point of you're praying in the spirit for twenty minutes to thirty minutes, and then you'll find yourself praying in the spirit for an hour. So 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 when as as you submit to the Holy Spirit. The more you submit to the Holy Spirit, the more the Holy Spirit is able to reveal to you. He will show you things to come. So I, so I always tell people, you know, as, as an intercessor, use that key. That's a, that's, a, that's a great key as an intercessor. It's being able to pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit because He unlocked mysteries. He unlocked mysteries. He will, he will show you stuff behind the scenes. He will show you stuff behind the scenes. So he want to strengthen you with might in your inner man. We need, we need, we need our inner man to be strong. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and be, and being rooted and grounded in love. Again, there it is. Being rooted and grounded in love. We are to be rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height. And I, even when I look at that scripture, I think about the cross. That our, that our intercession has to represent the cross. Hmm. Which is also the finished works of Christ. I should be able to see the cross in your intercession. And we, call, and we, and we talk about again. We talk about, um, we talk about the area of reconciliation. The intercessors that we reconcile. That's, 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 a, that's a part of intercession. If you're not one that, that's able to reconcile, you know, whether it's a, it's a situation, reconciling your brothers and your brothers and sisters in Christ, then, then you need to check your, your intercession. Because again, we don't go around sowing discord. And we don't, and we don't go around sowing dishonor and division. We hate division. And to know the and to know the love of Christ. To know means to that means to, to become one. Excuse me, to become one. Become one. Become intimate with the love of Christ. Being intimate, that's intimacy. That's, that's talking about your relationship with Christ. That's an area that we have to work on as intercessors. We can't have a, a faulty foundation. Our relationship, our intercession has to be built on our relationship with Christ. And being one with him. Because we're, because we're, we're called to be co-laborers with Christ. And I'm going to get back into that scripture again. I feel that scripture coming on again. But I'm going to finish out this. Now unto, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power. According to the power, the ability, the intercession. Come on. That worketh in us. The intercession that worketh in us. Then he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all with Throughout all ages, we're without end. Let's go back over to John, the 15th chapter. We're talking about being one. Let me see. The 
before I go to John 15th chapter, let me go over to John the 17th chapter and the 22nd verse. This is another area that I always, always talk about because we all, we always hear throughout the body of Christ, people are glory carriers. <laughs> but again, glory carriers don't cause strife. That's not in, in scripture. Listen, we got to go back to scripture. John, the 17th chapter in the, in the 22nd verse. And the glory which thou gavest me. This is Jesus when he was talking. Gave me, I, I have given them that they may be one, one, even as we are as one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. So when we say that we are glory carriers, we are called to be one. We, we are one in the glory. We are one with Christ. That's, a, that's, that's an area of our intimacy. And that goes back to our relationship. Our relationship with with. with with, with God first and then our relationship with one another. John 15 chapter. John 15 chapter. And again, I always talk about abiding. Being able to abide. It's important that intercessors abide. <laughs> I am the true, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So there are seasons and times that intercessors, God takes us through a purging. So that when through our intercession, we're able to bear more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. We cannot bear fruit by ourselves. We need our relationship with Christ. We need our relationship with Christ. Except it abides in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, he said, without me, you can't, you can't do nothing without me. Thank you for coming on. You can, we can do nothing without him. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. We talking about being one with Christ. Making sure we are one with him. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is the father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. This is how, this, this is how we bear fruit. As intercessors, abiding in him and allowing his word to abide in us, to become alive in us. The spirit of truth. Amen. The spirit of truth. I believe that is all I'm going to share on tonight. So these are the areas that these are the areas and the tools that God gives us to keep us on the straight and narrow as intercessors and making sure we don't go over to the area of charismatic witchcraft, you know, that we've been seeing so much in the body, you know, God, God is doing a, um, God doing a cleansing, he's doing a purging, um, in the body of Christ. And so we want to make sure we guard ourselves from those areas, making sure we stay pure before the Lord, make sure we keep our hearts pure before the Lord and, and just continue to, um, stay in posture. You know, continue to keep our mind stayed on him. He said that when we keep our mind stayed on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. 
He would keep us in perfect peace. So we know that we have the mind of Christ. Amen. So we want to stay. We want to stay focused on him and continue to allow him to be first. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for coming on. I really appreciate you all. And I will be coming on again. And um, I will be doing some more teaching on every other Tuesday. I will be posting that as well with another sister in Christ of mine. Um, that I did a teaching with last night, but, um, I will be posting that on my page. So thank you all for coming on and may the Lord continue to bless you richly and continue to continue to empower you so that you can move forward as intercessors. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you have a wonderful night and happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Amen. <laughs>